Alright, so before I start this video, I just want to let my new subscribers know that I am doing a giveaway and it ends at 5,000 subscribers. And as I speak, I'm 200 away from 5,000. So all you need to do to enter is comment what platform you have down below. Pick any game you want. It doesn't even have to be any of these three, but any game you want. And then just click that like and subscribe button on this video and then you're automatically entered in the giveaway. 2K18 is right around the corner. What are you guys looking to see? What's something you'd want to see? I want, I want to be able to have more control over my dribbles, like what I do with my dribbling, just more combinations. I'm looking forward to seeing what 2K has in store as far as their archetypes go. See if we're going to change things up. Can we go any further than we did in 2K17? Well, here's the thing, Rachel. NBA 2K likes to innovate especially with our biggest modes. And I think you're going to see a huge innovational leap coming to 2K18. All right, so let's talk about the dribbling system from 2K14 to 2K17. At the beginning of the video, you guys saw the program team that won the whole program tournament 2K17, right? They were talking about what they liked about 2K17 and what they want to see different in 2K18. And one of the guys said they want to have more control over the dribbling in 2K18. But honestly, in my opinion, all the dribble moves and ankle breakers from 2K14 all the way up to 2K17, they all look the same. But then again, LD2K just said that the 2K devs like to be innovative. And what that means is they like to make changes throughout all the 2Ks and make the newest 2K the best they can. So like, it's different from all the other 2Ks. So what I did for the purpose of this video is I put some dribbling clips together from 2K14 all the way up to 2K17 because I want to show you guys something. As you're watching these clips, you can see that all the dribble moves are the same. Like the snatchbacks, the crossovers, the behind the backs, and the ankle breaker animations. All of them seem to be the same, so what LD2K said was kind of a lie because they're not innovative. But hopefully this year in 2K18, they're actually innovative because I don't want to be playing the same game. And since I'm a park player, I don't want to be running around the same parks that we had in 2K16 because this year, they basically just copied and pasted them. Alright, so let's talk archetypes, alright? 2K17 is the first year they added archetypes because last year in 2K16, it was just inside, outside, and balance. But they were trying to be innovative and they wanted to change the game up a little bit by adding archetypes, alright? And the fact that the archetypes aren't even balanced is what makes people hate 2K17 even more. Alright, so I'm about to give you guys a good ass example. At the beginning of 2K17, I used to think stretch bigs were OP because they could green it from half court, but in the NBA, this starting to be a lot more stretch bigs, so that's not as OP as the other position I'm about to talk about, alright? Now, shot creators is the most broken position in the game because their role in the game is to shoot acrobatic shots. And what I mean by that is, if they're double teamed with two seconds left and they throw up a shot, that's an acrobatic shot. And the fact that they make it 99% of the time makes them so OP and broken. Alright, but there's so much more to say about all these archetypes, but I don't want to keep this video going on any further. It's been 3 minutes and 24 seconds, so I'm going to stop the video right here. So if you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And 5K is coming soon, bro, and that's when the giveaway ends. And I'm out. Peace.